Hi, this is James Cook, Assistant Professor of Social Science at the University of Maine at Augusta, and tonight I want to talk about social networks, uh, specifically about a program called Node XL, uh, available for download at nodexl.codeplex.com. Uh, in a previous video, I've talked about how to download this program and how to install the program, but now let's talk about running the program, using it to enter some edge lists, using those edge lists to create uh, network graphs, and then uh, running some metrics on uh, the graph that's a result. So in order to start Node XL, uh, one thing you could do is go look directly in the innards of your computer, which should be a Windows computer running Microsoft Office. So in order to do that, I'm going to hit the Start key and E, holding down the Start key, then hitting E, and I'm going to look for what is usually the C drive, the main drive of the computer, typically under Program Files x86, but sometimes under the just plain Program Files folder. We'll be looking for a folder that either says Node XL or Social Media Research Foundation, uh, an arm of Microsoft which creates the Microsoft Office software, has also created this Node XL program. Under the folder Node XL template, we will look for the file Node XL graph, and we can double click that and start Node XL. It will take a moment to load. Now, there's another way that you can find Node XL that is easier if you have a Windows 7 or a Windows Vista or a Windows 8 uh, computer. And the way to do that, which I'll show you after the, the program loads fully, there we are, is to hit the Start key, which is the key that looks like a little window down at the lower left-hand corner of your Windows computer and then just to start typing Node XL. And in a recent a Windows computer, you should see Node XL XL template pop up. If you double click that, that will also just start Node XL. A lot easier, right? But I wanted to show you both ways. Now, if we take a look at Node XL, there's a lot of stuff here. A few things are really important to notice. Up at the top, you'll notice under all these different tabs at the top, there's one tab that says Node XL. Click on that and you will see a bunch of options, commands that you can use to um, do a lot of things. Also notice at the bottom there are really two very important tabs to start with. One says edges, the other says vertices. Uh, a vert a vertices, uh, that's a plural word for vertex, which is a synonym for node. Edge uh, is a synonym for tie. So what we're going to do is enter some ties first, and there's a neat trick. Once it knows what the ties are, who it's between, it will know to how to generate a list of nodes. You know from your Hansen book that an edge list is one of the forms uh, through which it's possible to uh, depict a social network. We're going to use that form in Node XL by clicking on the Edges tab. And then you'll notice there are two columns, Vertex 1 and Vertex 2. Now, you can create uh, an undirected file, in which case it really doesn't matter which vertex you put first, because in an undirected uh, network, there's simply a tie that connects two nodes without any direction. If you want to create a directed network, then uh, clicking that Node Excel tab up, up at the top you'll want to head over to the graph sub area and you see where it says undirected here? I'm going to click and select directed if I want to. I, I don't want to right now, so I'm going to uh, re-click undirected. I'm just gonna create a simple undirected tie. Now, in the first row, of all these cells underneath vertex one and vertex two, I'm going to start to create a network. I've asked you in, in homework to create specific networks. I'm gonna create a general network, a, a network of people who play tennis with each other. I'm gonna say that uh, Howard plays tennis with David. David 
plays tennis with Lucy. Lucy plays tennis with Chuck. Chuck plays tennis with Lois. Lois and Edna play tennis. And then Edna and David also play tennis. What have I done? Each time I go onto a different row to depict a different set of edges. There are a whole bunch of other columns other than vertex 1 and vertex 2, but we don't need to worry about them yet. Uh, the only other uh, button I want you to worry about at this step is over on the right hand side. Uh, there's a whole panel over here that says document actions uh, and it says node XL network graphs and there's a lot of funny looking stuff they want you to donate money to them which you might want to do or you might not it's up to you but what's really important here is a button that says show graph it converts your edge list into a network graph and let's do that automatically it creates a graph uh, now, this is a graph that is very simple. It consists simply of dots uh, and then uh, lines. Uh, we don't know who are, the dots are. Uh, we don't know uh, who's being connected to whom unless we pay a whole lot of attention over on the left. And if we have a very large network, you could quickly lose track. And furthermore, one of the things we've noticed in the visualization is that, oh, some lines are crossing. This is because there are multiple possible visualization styles that you can use. So uh, if you see this little icon, which is of an ego network, you can look to the right and you'll see Fruchtum and Rheingold as an option for visualization, which is a fine place to start. You could put them in a circle. See, they're arrayed in a circle and then they're connected. You could put them in a spiral. Okay, now believe it or not, that's a spiral. If you create enough nodes, they'll move around. You could uh, put them in a grid. You could allow them to fit randomly. You could use a Sugiyama style, which is an ordered style that tries to create a hierarchy. Okay. Or you could use my favorite, which is the Harold Corin Mat Fast Multiscale, which is a spring embedding kind of um, uh, visualization style. One that says, hey, let's uh, make nodes that are connected to each other pulled together and nodes that are not connected to each other push away from each other. So let's select that. Harel Core and Fast Multiscale. And re-click. And you'll notice that we have no more crossing lines. That's, that's lovely. Um, there are more options that you have in visualization. If you right-click and select Graph Options, you could Curve those uh, lines a little bit. Those are things that you can play with. I encourage you to do so. But right now we have a nice looking network. We still don't know who those nodes are. How can we fix that? Well, one thing we can do is that we can head over to our vertices tab. And we know here, oh look, it's been automatically filled. We have a set of one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six nodes. We can ask that these vertices, we can select them by uh, holding down the left uh, mouse button, it used to be called, but I suppose a trackpad button, and then copying, selecting the next cell over here, and pasting these in and now all of a sudden we have a set of labels great when I refresh the graph all of a sudden I have names 
Wonderful, wonderful names. Every time I do a little spring embedding, I end up with a different, slightly different looking graph, but the underlying information is always the same. Howard is the one that's sticking out, right? Because Howard uh, plays tennis with David, who plays tennis with Edna and Lucy, who then connect, uh, finish the chain uh, with uh, Chuck and Lois. And I have a network. Uh, that's great. Uh, what else can I do? Well, uh, I can start to look at these other columns. For instance, uh, I can change the size of these nodes, these vertices, to use the synonym. It says, enter an optional vertex size between 1 and 1,000. So I could just arbitrarily say, oh, look, I'm going to give them different sizes. 5, 10, 100, and 2. And then what could I do? I could hit refresh graph again to see those changes put into action. Oh, that's nice, I suppose. I could change their shape. Uh, so here's a key when I roll over the shape tab. It will tell me how to get a disk, a sphere. Oh, that looks great. A, a square, a diamond. I could put loads of shapes in there. And then I could hit refresh graph and see what happens. I'd get all kinds of shapes. Isn't that nice? I could choose colors. Now, I could use uh, an RGB format, which if you've used computers you might be familiar with. I could just type in some names of colors too, like red, green, brown, purple, blue, and orange. How nice. Refresh graph, and there they are. Right, I have a Lucy is a, apparently a brown sphere. David is a a, a green uh, what a green disc, a green circle. Lois is a blue square. Now that's really nice and interesting, but it doesn't mean anything. Uh, I want you when you create your uh, social network to have those shapes mean something. Perhaps they could distinct shapes could refer to different genders. Or if you're talking about a family, they might uh, refer to uh, people who are in a relationship together, you know, part of a, a nuclear family together. It's, that's your choice, but I want you to think carefully about it. Something else you can do in Node Excel is you can automatically create a set of calculations for uh, measurements that have previously been pretty difficult sometimes to calculate, including some I haven't asked you to calculate yourself, such as eigenvector centrality, the centrality in which uh, nodes are uh, high in eigenvector centrality if they are having a lot of connections to other people who are connected to a lot of other people who are connected to a lot of other people and so on. It can be a very difficult concept to think through or to run a calculation with, but here we can just select some of these centralities. We can select degree for an undirected graph or in degree and out degree for a digraph, directed graph. Uh, and we can also select the overall graph matrix, which include the number of vertices, the number of edges, oh, and some other things, graph density, average geodesic distance, and diameter. So if we select all of these to calculate, just these four, and then we hit calculate metrics, we wait a very short amount of time, really, compared to how long it would take us to calculate these measurements and we'll soon be done. And now you'll notice that a few new tabs have been generated. First one with overall metrics, which shows us graph density, average geodesic distance, diameter, number of vertices, number of edges. Wonderful. We can uh, head back to our vertices tab and we'll notice if we head over that we have degree, 
now in indicated we can check yes david does have a degree of three betweenness centrality closeness centrality there it is eigenvector centrality um uh, who's the closest to those who ha ha are, are closest to others well david david has the highest eigenvector centrality he knows people who know other people uh, wonderful that was very quick and very useful for us and it can do one more thing we can give some meaning to uh, items like shape and color by hitting autofill columns this will bring up some options where we can take the vertex color and we can make it fit with oh let's say the betweenness centrality and then hitting the options we can click vertex color options and we can say we want the smallest between the centrality to be black and the highest centrality to be a light red lovely we can think about uh, vertex size being meaningful. Let's make vertex size be for the biggest degree. And then we can click, uh, well, let's click options to make sure that's what we're doing. Map the smallest number in the column to vertex size 1.5 and the largest number in the column to, oh, let's say vertex size 30. So we can see a bigger difference. Oh, what the heck, 60, just having fun. And then we can autofill and see what happens. And now what do we have? We have uh, color. Uh, and we have, oh, of course, uh, it might help to take out the previous colors. And then we'll autofill again. We'll take out the shapes so that they all go to disks. And we'll try that autofill again. If you don't get what you want, always clear out the previous options and try again. There we go. And now we have a very small Howard. Why is he small? Uh, because he has a very low degree, 1.5. We have a very high degree David, the biggest circle of them all. And we have individuals who have the highest between the centrality being pink. And the lowest between the centrality being dark. Edna and Lucy are somewhere in between. All of a sudden, uh, we have a social network that is telling us more than simply who is connected to whom, but tells us about who the most central figures are. So when I ask you to think about the arrangement of nodes, to think about elements such as size, uh, to think about labels, to think about colors, and making choices that mean something. This is what I want you to work on. Uh, these are some of the choices you can make. If you know something about the individuals personally and you want to categorize them, you can do that manually. If you want to tie that to some network characteristics, you can do that as well. Uh, best of luck as you do this work, and if you have any questions, please, uh, get in touch with me. Uh, I look forward to hearing your questions, and I look forward to seeing some of the results that you'll be sending my way. Have a good night.